Divine Masculine is a new energy that has entered the scene here on Earth. He has a clear mission and he won't be tempted by praise or position. He is here to end the victim perpetrator cycle that humanity has been stuck in. His power to change the whole playing field during this time of mass spiritual awakening is noted by the powers that be. And because of that, he is a target and he has unique challenges. So today I will be sharing what the true meaning of the Divine Masculine is. And at the end of this video, I will share the Divine Masculine's mission during this age. The Divine Masculine in this current stage has had to overcome a lot of programming. Even the abuse he has suffered is a unique one. Every direction he turns, the Matrix wants to mold him into the image of the false masculine. He is shamed out of his feelings and knocked out of his emotional body. His sex drive is targeted to keep him out of his higher centers. With nowhere to go, the energy is blocked in the root center, creating a limited identity of his full potential. He is suppressed by forces that look like they are for him. They don't want him to step into his inner authority. So the patriarchy of the false father brainwash him into believing that true masculinity is in patriotism and serving his country. When in reality, he has become an order following instrument for pathological forces. He has privately struggled with overcoming the exploitation of his sex drive through the porn that they've pumped into his psyche. They've cultivated misogyny within him. If he is particularly clever, they attempt to direct his consciousness into secret societies. If he advances into the metaphysical realm, then the masculine energy is manipulated only this time in the form of suppression. We are shamed out of our spiritual warrior energy and the ability to take conscious action. We are taught to redirect our masculine energy into hyper passive states. We are told it is wrong. Is it any wonder we are only now learning how to connect with and rewild the divine masculine energy both in men and women alike? It's such a powerful force in altering the course of our spiritual evolution that it needs to be micromanaged and subdued every step along the way. By the time the wounded masculine has stepped into the divine masculine, he has worked through every seductive offer there is to be pulled into toxic masculinity the seduction to feel oppressed by equality, to conform his allegiance to parasitic institutions, to be rendered docile from spirituality, to surrender his discernment to religious programming, or to use his natural ability for logic as a weapon against the metaphysical rather than a tool to bridge spirit and science. He cannot be bought into reinforcing the status quo through cognitive dissonance and a fragile worldview. He is here to bring the transformation that will undo it. He is a true alpha, not the betas we see running around the world stage trying desperately to imitate his qualities and attributes with their psychopathy. We are not used to seeing a true alpha. We have mistaken the divine masculine for all sorts of pathological figures who are deeply toxic. We justify their behavior we make up excuses for why they act that way. We fill in their plot holes instead of activating our own masculine energy by having the courage to see through these false figures and then we end up just glorifying them. We yearn to awaken this presence within us and yet we are scared of it at the same time because true masculine energy is the capacity to handle truth to a degree that would rip our ego's reality to shreds. Some men specifically came into this life with the purpose, at a soul level, to be the physical embodiment of the Divine Masculine, so that men have an example of what true masculinity looks like. But purpose itself is still abstract, especially at a soul level. So if you would like me to dive deeper into this concept of purpose at the soul level, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video explaining soul purpose in more depth. Because of the draconian presence that Earth has been shaped by, we have only seen a caricature of what true masculinity and femininity look like. We've only known them in their deeply wounded forms. Because of this, there is a very interesting thing that happens when embodying divine masculine or divine feminine energy, and this is not well known. And that is, in order for a person to become the divine masculine, they actually have to also embody the attributes of the Divine Feminine. 
and vice versa. Because these energies leave off where the other begins. There are more than just complementary forces. They are a continuum of a whole being. If the feminine energy at its core is the waveform state of pure potential, the masculine is the particle. It is infinity in deep concentration and then pixelated into manifestation, which is why the word manifest begins with the word man. The divine masculine is the standard for healthy boundaries, conscious action, focus, logic, support and structure, self-defense, objectivity. He's our ability to harness the quantum, nonlinear properties of the feminine and then synthesize it into the linear to make sense from nonsense and to create order from chaos. The feminine energy in this context is our ability for intuition, creativity, receiving, compassion, and nurture. The masculine energy cannot be centered and in his true form without integrating these two forces within himself. Just like the feminine energy cannot be in her true form without integrating these two forces within herself. It's not like women don't need boundaries and men don't need to be informed by their heart center. As a woman without the ability to assert boundaries is a prime target for stalkers or any variety of perpetrator energy. And a man cut off from his ability to access empathy can fragment into psychopathy. The union of these two energies within the individual is not a demonic force that some groups would make it out to be. They actually need to both be present within a person or else the being goes into either hyper-passivity or dominance, and not in the sexy fun time way, just in a really sad and wounded way. In fact, the disconnection of these two forces is what actually causes toxic masculinity and femininity in all of its many forms. If we are overly masculine, that can manifest as a cynical, tyrannical logic that worships the empirical and despises the spiritual. But another imbalance is we can also lack enough masculine energy, which causes us to become passive, stuck, and blocked in regards to executing our vision or acting on our inspiration. So the disconnection from our counterpart energy shows up in different forms. But on a macrocosmic level, this imbalance is actually what attracts timelines where we play out existential, archetypal themes of the victim perpetrator cycle, endlessly switching roles until these energies are harmonized and integrated once and for all. How the integration looks on the outside is up to our own unique personal expression, as there is no one way the divine masculine is supposed to look. He can look like a bodybuilder or wear eyeshadow. The divine masculine's mission in this lifetime is to restore the masculine energy into its true state by being the living, walking, breathing embodiment of this energy. The version of masculinity that does not abuse his power, but also does not fear it. Just like we grow up with victimized parents whose trauma we reenact in our own lives, the divine masculine is the new template. And simply by existing, by being himself, he is broadcasting this frequency into the morphic field so that humanity can reenact him. In a world where it's so easy to hop on the nearest bandwagon of any movement, where even the free thinkers are trapped in a hive mind mentality, the divine masculine thinks for himself and shows others what true sovereignty looks like. He does not fear his feminine energy. He knows that integrating it does not diminish his masculinity, it strengthens it. In fact, it is his destiny. He is here to transform himself into the alchemical winged serpent, the ultimate alpha frequency that does no harm, but takes no bull. In the divine feminine, he has a true counterpart who does not shame him out of his power or ask him to make himself small, but who can hold space for his development just as he can hold space for hers. They're both actively healing their unique wounding and encouraging one another to rise from the ashes of generational trauma and the subconscious programming 
from a patriarchy that was never truly for either one of them. Together, these two energies guide each other into the unity consciousness era and lead humanity into a new age. I hope this has helped activate your divine masculine. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. See you next time. Thank you.